beyond the limits of morality. Oh. In a few weeks, we'll have it all. And beyond the boundaries of life. I am dead. You killed her. And I didn't kill her! The terror of George Romero. Wake up! The suspense of Dario Argento. A new dimension of evil that goes beyond all evil. Two evil eyes. Very intriguing title. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, the premise seemed pretty neat. It's funny because I, I guess the title must have changed because originally it was supposed to be an anthology film consisting of like four segments. Sure. And uh, originally John Carpenter and Stephen King were supposed to be part of it. John Carpenter had scheduling issues and Stephen King was uninterested because uh, he had a bad experience uh, with Maximum Overdrive. Frequent Romero collaborator Tom Savini provided the special effects uh, for Two Evil Eyes. Oh, Tom Savini. Yeah, you like Tom Savini, right? Yeah, I know a little bit about him. I got his books. Two Evil Eyes was a a co-production between the U.S. and Italy. And uh, I hadn't realized this, but uh, Dawn of the Dead was also an uh, Italian-American co-production. Dario Argento and his brother Claudio made a deal to co-finance the film in exchange for the international distribution rights. Mm -hmm. And Argento also consulted with uh, Romero during the script writing process. Both based off of uh, Edgar Allan Poe stories, right? Is kind of the idea. Oh, no, I'm talking about uh, Dawn of the Dead. Oh, 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 wow. Okay, wait. So... (laughs) (laughs) No. Was that the <laughs> no, no, I got you. <laughs> yeah, re- re- rewind. Yeah, re- rewind. <laughs> yeah, so Dario Argento helped finance Dawn of the Dead. Okay. That was cool. an Italian American co production. Okay, cool. Is that why everybody's dubbed? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Need the more up in the movie, you know? And why all the blood is just so red. Yeah. Just the most red blood. I guess they got, you know. You need to kill an animal and put some p- in the movie. Yeah necessary for good uh, yeah. Italian cinema. So uh, Romero and Argento had been working together since the 70s, which is weird because their styles aren't very complimentary. I mean, I've really only seen uh, Night of the Living Dead by Romero and um, what, what was his... What else? Is, Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the uh, Dead, right. Day of the Dead. Dead. Okay. Yeah, uh... Romero's probably most well-known for Night of the Living Dead. You know, all the sequels and stuff. He's made a lot of films. Right. They're just not any good. No. no. The only ones that are good are the zombie ones and Creepshow. And he's made a lot of other crappy movies that never really panned out. Um, But that's why he kept returning to making zombie movies. So every decade, he ended up coming back to it. Why not? You know, if it ain't broke. But an Edgar Allan Poe uh, movie is a weird choice for George Romero. Dario Argento, the Italian filmmaker, also the very prolific uh, director of Suspiria and a lot of other like low-budget gallo and horror films. Edgar Allan Poe was an American writer, poet, editor, and literary critic. Mm. Poe is best known for his poetry and short stories. Yeah. Uh, particularly his tales of mystery and the macabre. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Russ, do you enjoy tales of the macabre? Oh, for certain. Uh, Poe was one of the country's earliest practitioners of the short story Mm -hmm. and considered to be the inventor of the detective fiction genre. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. As well as significant contributor to the emerging genre of science fiction. Poe is the first well-known American writer to earn a living through writing alone. (laughs) Ha ha. Son of a bitch. Yeah. Resulting in a financially difficult life and career. So Edgar Allan Poe wasn't only America's first goth kid, but uh, he was the first hipster and also uh, a starving artist. Yeah, that's why. Pro- yeah, that yeah. that checks out a lot. That's why it appeals to. Uh, fucking, uh, that's why it appeals to you? Yeah, sure. I'm such a dumb person. I was say Tim only... Burton, but oh, okay. why it appeals to Tim Burton? Yeah, yeah. No, was it? I was I mean, gonna say I'm such a dumb person that my only uh, Edgar Allan Poe reference was uh, the pro wrestler Raven, mm. who was, you know, got his name from the Raven. Did he say Nevermore a lot? No, he used to say, "What about me? What about Raven?" And then he would sit in the corner of the ring and pout. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah that's... Yeah. It's kind of... It is... And I think that is very Ed Ground Poe. That's very Ed Ground, you know, yeah. dreary, like sad. What about me, man? Yeah, like, yeah. what about him? He dressed like raven, he was in dude. Pearl Jam, and he was really into Ed Ground Poe. Oh. Yeah, I bet he reads a lot of poetry. A yeah. poetry. 
Yeah. Because. Because his name is. Poe. Did you know poetry was actually written because of Ed? You know, because of Edgar Allan Poe. No, I didn't know that. That's not a fact. That's not a fact. It's a non-fact. Okay. <clears throat> I'm giving it two stars. I don't think, uh, you know, this movie is completely awful. I was kind of on the fence. Okay. So I'd say if you're interested in, uh, you know, George Romero and Dario Argento, then it's probably worth watching. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, or um, yeah, yeah. Or I guess uh, Harvey Keitel or Adrian <laughs> Barbeau. Those are two big names. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can I tell? Well, we'll get to him in a second. Yeah. And also, this is free on Tubi. It's on Amazon Prime. And uh, they did a 4K transfer recently, so it looks oh. like really good. Uh, so the movie opens with a montage of Edgar Allan Poe's house in Baltimore. It's also like very funny that Edgar Allan Poe is from Baltimore. Everybody I've ever met from Maryland is from Baltimore is like extremely trashy. And just to imagine like an <clears throat> extremely trashy Baltimore goth kid is very funny. It's kind of woodsy, though. Yo, I don't. I like fucking Slipknot. I don't, like, I, I just don't even know how that would work. Uh, no, Baltimore is a fucking Bay City. Oh, uh, okay. It's like Baltimore's weird because it's kind of the Northeast, but also kind of down South. Yeah, and they have a very strange sure. accent. It's like somewhere between Pennsylvania and fucking Georgia. The first film is the facts in the case of Mister Valdemar. Ooh. This is uh, directed by George Romero, oh. and the screenplay is by Romero. So starring Adrian Barbeau, Rami Zada, who I've never seen in anything, by the way. Yeah, I didn't recognize any of the uh, yeah. actors, really. And uh, Bingo O'Malley, who he was an actor from Pittsburgh that Romero put in a lot of his films. And apparently he had been known as uh, Pittsburgh's finest actor. Oh, wow. Bingo. Yeah, Bingo what O'Malley. A what a name, Bingo O'Malley. Pittsburgh's finest actor. Pittsburgh's finest. Which sounds like a backhanded compliment. <laughs> That's like saying he's the best entertainment lawyer in all of Gainesville, Florida. <laughs> it's being the real specific about it that makes it, you know, you're, you're real well, you're good. You're not sure. Are they trying to compliment him or are they trying to make fun of him? I don't, I don't know. The best actor, the finest actor in all of Youngstown, Ohio. So uh, Adrian Barbeau gives a great performance as uh, Jessica Valdemar. She's a stewardess turned trophy wife who's very eager to get her ailing husband's uh, assets liquidated. In the first scene, she's at her husband's uh, lawyer's office, and she has uh, papers supposedly signed by her husband, Ernest Valdemar. Uh, she's trying to cash out all his assets, and the lawyer is skeptical, so she puts him on the phone with uh, Ernest, who seemingly co-signs what she's doing. Hmm. But uh, things are not as they seem, Russ. No. Nope. I mean, this is, wouldn't be a Edgar Allan Poe knock off would it yeah <laughs> if yeah. it didn't have a twist <laughs> he's like the original Shyamalan no, 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 is he no <laughs> definitely not maybe add twist I've only read like a couple of stories I read Telltale Heart and then I actually read the uh, the Black Cat yeah which is which is the second movie in this. well someone's editing themselves as a dork who reads books dude this was back in in grade school when I gave a shit Gary yeah. <laughs> I had to do it it was homework <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a nerd. I just, yeah. Like, yeah, whatever. So it turns out uh, Mr. Uh, Valdemar is under hypnosis mm. uh, by his uh, supposed doctor, who was actually Mrs. Valdemar's longtime lover. What a scandal. Dr. Robert Hoffman is played by uh, Rami Zada. And, you know, this is a pretty interesting character. I've never met a medical doctor uh, slash hypnotist before. Yeah, it is an interesting pairing of uh, skills. Also, he's supposed to be Adrian Barbeau's longtime uh, boyfriend from like before she met her much older husband. But Rami Zada looks a lot younger than Adrian Barbeau. Yeah, so, uh, you know, the, the Dr. Robert sure. Hoffman character is a bit darker than Mrs. Valdemar. He seems to enjoy fucking with her ailing husband, which I guess makes sense. He resents him for stealing his girlfriend. And uh, yeah. Adrian Barbeau's character is more conscientious and she seems guilty. Right, she's not really feeling it. Her yeah. and her sharp eyebrows. The movie implies she's starting to uh, mistrust Robert, the guy she's scamming her husband with. And that's a big theme in this piece. It's like, how can you trust someone who you're cheating someone else with? The big plot hole here, though, is, like, why are they doing any of this? If Mr. Valdemar is so close to death, she's going to get all this money anyways. Like, <laughs> is, it, is she in the will, though? What, she's trying to prenup? It doesn't make any sense. 
Yeah, I guess so. She would get everything. She's going to get the estate. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, sure. But, you know. <laughs> well. This is why uh, Edgar Allan Poe never made any money, Russ. He's right. a fucking shitty writer. It's very dumb. Like, this lady, she wasted her good years, you know, getting plowed <laughs> by uh, Bingo O'Malley. And she's going to risk it all to get the money, like, three weeks early. Yo, you bitch. Get in here and suck my old dick. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, I'm the oh. best actor in all of Pittsburgh. If you want my fortune, you're going to have to release those big fat baboobs. <laughs> baboobs? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, he would call him that because uh, cause it's Bingo. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, Bingo's he's, a, he's a fun guy. He's a fun guy. Yeah. So there's a lot of mistrust between Jessica and Robert. There's a scene where they're like making out and... Uh, like Robert is more concerned with uh, making sure he gets his half of the money in cash. <laughs> yeah, they're they're both like, you know, it's whispering sweet money. Nothing's into each other's ear. It's, yeah, it's very weird. It's a very weird scene. And also, I, he goes right for Adrian Barbeau's uh, big heavies. Oh, I mean, why not? Yeah, they don't show uh, Adrian Barbeau topless in this film, but Swamp Thing is also free on Tubi. So if you want to see what cost uh, Mr. Valdemar his life and fortune. You can go throw on Swamp Thing and uh, fast forward to the last uh, 15 minutes. Was that before uh, the age of PG-13? That might have been pre-PG-13. That might have been like 82. Okay, yeah. Yeah. It was like, well, so they're this like, Yeah, what? Adrian Barbeau's big fat tits? Yeah, G-rated. That's where, that's where you first... That's when you first came? When I first... In the Swamp Thing? When you saw... No, I don't think so. I mean, I was only like five or six when I first saw Swamp Thing, so I hope I didn't come... Yeah, no, that'd be weird. If I did, I blacked it out, and it's a uh, it, it was yeah. with an uncle. So the whole time, you get a sense that uh, Jessica Valdemar has gotten in a bit too deep, and uh, Robert, the formerly scorned lover, uh, has a lot of control over the situation because he's a doctor and he's a hypnotist, and mm. you know he's not a fucking dumb trophy wife with massive tits. Ouch. I mean, she does say to someone... She does have massive tits. She, she, I don't know if I've said that enough, but Adrian Barbeau is fucking stacked. All right. yeah. I mean, I cannot disagree. Yeah. Can you... John Carpenter saw those big fat tits and he was like, oh, what, my award-winning producer wife? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> was she in that? Or was she... What? Did John Carpenter leave his... Uh, is Adrian... Did John Carpenter leave the woman who produced his... Every his movie? Even? first five successful films with for Adrian Barbo's tits? Yes. Oh, wow. Who would have thought? No this is an entertainment older. news program, <laughs> Russ. We're covering the hot stories <laughs> from 1987. Time rewind. Yeah. Yeah, dude. So, uh, back to Two Evil Eyes. 1990. 1990. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see her tits in this movie. Like I, I've seen Adrian Barbeau's tits in 1982. I want to see how they're holding up in 1990. Right? Well, yeah, sure. But alas. Alas, you don't get to see them. Not this time. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to deep fake them, Gary. I think they have programs on. They're probably better in 82 anyways. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> just, just remember. Is it a deep fake if you just put... Uh, old Adrian Barbeau's face on young Adrian Barbeau's tits? I don't think that's a deep fake. I think that's just... Ruining young Adrian Barbeau's tits. <laughs> Ernest dies under hypnosis, and wanting to keep his death a secret, Robert and Jessica hide him in a freezer in the basement. Oh, dude, they're freaking out because I would be freaking out. I think this is where it doesn't make like... any sense. The plot is a, this is a huge plot hole. Yeah. They, so they don't want people to know Ernest died because it will tie up them getting the money. Sure. But the guy died of seemingly natural causes, even if he was hypnotized. Right. So now they're <laughs> implicating themselves in murder over money that she's going to get anyways. It's a pretty stupid plot. I, I, I mean, the 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 guy at the the firm mm-hmm. tells her that her husband has to stay alive in order for a couple of yeah. She's trying. She's in a rush through. to liquidate the money, and if if he dies, it's gonna ruin. It's gonna tie up that. But it doesn't matter if he dies. She's still the heir to all his money. She just wants to get it really quick, right? She's trying to get it in three right. weeks for <laughs> fucking Robert or whatever. The plot doesn't make sense. Right. Right. I think um, I think the expedited nature of their wanting the money is what fucked her over. Yeah, yeah. Had she just let him die in the six months or obviously in the next two weeks, you know, she should have just let it happen. During the night, Jessica hears moaning coming from the basement, but she can't wake Robert up uh, who has because he's put himself into a 
uh, hypnosis induced sleep. Jessica and Robert are supposed to be longtime lovers uh-huh. with a history going back before his mar- her marriage to Ernest. But when Robert tells her he's putting himself under self hypnosis, she's confused and he has to explain it well, to her yeah, what he's ne- doing. They've never slept. So together. she's she's never seen she's, him put himself under self hypnosis before. She, or is he just s- experimenting with this now when he has a corpse in the fucking basement? It makes no sense. You're right. I think they just never slept together. They've only slept together. <laughs> you know. Yeah. They've only uh, copulated instead of uh, uh, somnambulated. Or it's a stupid movie. Yeah, it's a stupid movie. Yeah. And it, the, he's got this huge metronome. Yeah, it's a weird like it's digital huge. metronome. <laughs> but it's big. It's like bigger than a lava lamp, yeah. right? Well, in 1990, they were like, oh, this is fucking slick. Look at this. <laughs> it's got huge lasers. and <laughs> You fit all those electronics into that little thing? Oh, wow. Where'd you get this? Sharper image? <laughs> The whole light flash back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Oh, funny. So uh, the body continues to make noises, and uh, Jessica makes Robert go check on uh, the corpse. Mm. And now it's like completely frozen solid. I guess you could say he's a cuck cold. <laughs> or he's cold cuck. Like cold cuts? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first one's better? Yeah, the first one's better. But yeah, cut that second one. <laughs> so uh <laughs> yes that's the best i got if, no it's good if you were waiting for that it's pretty much no it. that's good it's yeah good. i liked it so uh valdemar's voice claims that his soul is alive and trapped in a dark cold place between the living and the dead uh, and he tells them he can see many others looking at him yeah this was revealed across a little bit of time but yeah uh yeah, she's kind of spooked out, and I mean, he's and he's saying it without really moving his lips. Yeah, the voice is just kind of uh, coming out of thin air. Yeah, and the movie's called Two Evil Eyes, so I'm expecting his eyes to like open at any moment, right? <clears throat> but he's frozen solid. I think it's just because it's two films. It this it's called Two Evil Lies because it's two films. Yeah, didn't you think that was the point? I mean, I was gonna discuss it <laughs> with oh. you because I don't fucking know why it's called <laughs> Two Evil Lies. <laughs> Voldemort continues to haunt his uh, chesty wife and later uh, asks Robert to wake him from hypnosis so he can be free. Right. He tells Robert that the others he sees are uh, vengeful spirits that want to use him to enter the world of the living. And just then Jessica comes in with a pistol and she puts uh, two bullets right in Ernest's face. Yeah. She just comes straight blasts him. Yeah. Like remorseless. Because, I mean, the ghost... Of her, of her husband is like whispering, <laughs> you know. She's pretty it's freaked fucked out. up, uh, and she feels like that would do the trick. That would close him up. But I'm thinking that this doctor should have fucking did it. Like he hears Ernest or uh, fucking Bingo saying, "Hey, oh, should have woke him from." Should have woke him. He's like, hypnosis? "Hey, wake me up." You, I remember those others I told you about. They're yeah. fine. They want to kill you. They, it's bad. <laughs> you know? Yeah, should have woken him up, but Wake too late me now. Up before... Yeah, yeah. The fucking nightmare. So you know they argue about what to do. Jessica wants to bury the corpse and take off with the three hundred k she cleared. And suddenly it feels like a twist in dynamic, and Robert comes off as the more conscientious one. And now he's being twisted by Jessica and her big uh, happy slappies. So Robert goes to dig a hole for Ernest and uh, Jessica heads back into the house where she encounters the now reanimated uh, Ernest of Voldemort. Oh, Voldemort. Come back from the dead. Yeah, Valdemar. I guess I hope I'm saying that right. Yeah, good old Voldemort. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Valdemar. <laughs> yeah, I think that was right. So Ernest tells Jessica that he's now being controlled by the vengeful spirits from the dark void. Uh oh, yeah. she's in trouble, and uh, as you know, it seemed that's probably like it. Oh yeah, she's fucked. She's told just to do yeah, yeah. They got the body. The others, you know, they wanted to use his body as a as a vessel to do no good. Yeah. And uh, what what do you suppose the others are, Gear? Oh, they're, they're like they're people all... that are like going to hell or trapped in purgatory or something. Oh, it's like a purgatory situation, something okay. like that. I assume it's not other people who are under hypnosis. It's the spirits of uh, of dead men who have to watch their, their wife fuck their lover. So it's like, you know what I mean? So now they're getting revenge through uh, Mr. Voldemort who's in a similar situation. Right, sure. You know. Cuck goats. 
Yeah. Cuck ghosts. Does that, a, does that work? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Jessica starts shooting at the frozen zombie Ernest, <laughs> but it doesn't slow him down. He just keeps uh, marching towards the heat generated by Adrian Barbeau's uh, ample bosom. <laughs> so <Aruga>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Ernest grabs Jessica, he shoots her, and then he tosses her off the balcony. And she falls right to Robert's feet. Honk, honk. You. Is that how you do in this episode? <laughs> Here's the weird thing, though, right? Oh, what? After, you know, zombie Ernest, like, throws uh, Jessica off the balcony, he, like, laughs, which is creepy. But I thought he wasn't the one control. He should be like, oops, sorry. <laughs> it's not me. This is the other spirits. Right. And the zombie Ernest looks pretty good, except the hands. The hands didn't look good. You notice that? Nah. I, I do a it looks like they were like, eh, put some fucking blue paint on the hands real quick. <laughs> so uh, Robert tries to wake Ernest from hypnosis. Mm. He tells Robert that it's too late, and without his body as a conduit, the others cannot return to their realm. Fools. Freaking yeah. fools, Gary. So he, he exclaims, uh, they're with you now, before he falls dead. And then uh, Robert steals all the cash that Jessica had stashed in the Ooh, safe. Open the safe. He found yeah. the he found the key. He he's gets out of there. the gold. He's out of there. Yeah, he's got the money. Go on, take money and run. Woo woo woo. Um, so then the police show up that night and they find the hole that they were digging, and uh, you get a great Tom Atkins cameo. He pops in as a uh, Detective Grogan, just kind of like smoking a cigar the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like the introduction of the, the two police officers. Yeah, so meanwhile at Robert's apartment, he puts himself under hypnosis again, which is a fucking terrible idea. Yeah, I don't know, but that's how he sleeps, Gary. It's the only way he sleeps. He's a prime suspect for multiple murders, and he's putting himself <laughs> under hypnosis right now. Like, get the fuck out of town, Robert. So, uh, you know, then Robert's door, like, swings open, and uh, the vengeful spirits enter Robert's apartment. They look very stupid. They're morph suits. Yeah. With yeah, it looks like the green man from It's Always Sunny. <laughs> yeah, come on. It's like a bunch of guys in like Lycra fucking green screen suits. You can only see it when it flashes lightning, though. Yeah, it's you a really know, terrible effect. It, I I understand it was, pro- it was probably the limitations of the effect. You well, know, you know this movie were... only had a $9 million budget, so it's understandable. <laughs> he only had $4.5 million for his side. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> So uh, they yeah, spent it all on the frozen, uh, frozen guy. They spent it all on uh, Adrian Barbeau's uh, breasts. <laughs> oh man, this is terrible. <laughs> all right, so uh, <laughs> that's not the nipples here. <laughs> yeah. So um, the vengeful spirits shove Doctor Robert's digital metronome thing into his chest. Dude, great effect. I, they, yeah, yeah. I, w- I was expecting them to like go inside of him or something, but they pick up his metronome, which you know I thought was pretty big, but I didn't realize how fucking honking huge this thing it's is. It's huge. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like if you had like a third scale Eiffel Tower built. It's for very your room. funny because you know it, it, they think it's like this slick, cool prop, and this is like, oh yeah, we're doing Edgar Allan Poe, and we're doing like hypnotism, but it's futuristic and, and cool for the '90s. We got this slick. Digital metronome that's fucking 27 pounds. And like, it's the size of a 27 inch TV set. If you put this thing in your apartment, there'd be like heat marks behind it on the wall where you had it. Uh, but yeah, dude, it plops. <laughs> yeah. It literally plops into his chest. Not yeah. even like, doesn't the bones don't matter? The mattress underneath doesn't matter. This thing just they really shut it rock. It's gonna be pretty heavy. Straight through his shit. Yeah, he gets fucked up. Yeah. Uh, it was great in the sound. So uh, the next scene, Tom Atkins and his partner are called to an apartment building. Uh, a neighbor reported screaming from inside of one of the the uh, apartments. They bust in and they're with their revolvers. Tom Atkins is like creeping around. I can't find anyone. And then uh, Tom Atkins goes into the bedroom and finds Robert with the metronome in his chest. He's all rotted out. Fucking awesome effect. Yeah. Looks really cool. Yeah, he's walking around nasty. Yeah. Whispering nasty dead people words. No, I think he's saying, like, I can't 
I can't wake up or some shit. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty creepy. And then it just ends with Adkins uh, shooting at him and like blood spraying all over the money. All over the money. Just close ups of like yeah. that that eye with the pyramid. Yeah. Uh, what do you think that's symbolic or something? In God We Trust, it says with them blasting the dead guys. Un, undead yeah, some, maybe something about the hypnotism and the pyramid of the metronome and, and some yeah. shit like that but it's at least a cool ending we're hypnotized by money gary i yeah, think yeah. i think at the, at the at the beginning and end of it that's mm-hmm. really what it's about she's it's under about the greed. hypnosis of greed and like money yeah yeah <clears throat> the doctor's under the hypnosis of power and, and that's why he is like oh i'm gonna put myself to sleep and i'll fucking wake myself up whenever i fucking want to and no one else can do that no matter how many times they shoot me or plop a yeah. big metronome in my chest really what this movie is it's a it's a cautionary tale about the dangers of uh hypnotism <laughs> as we all know <laughs> hypnotism is very dangerous yeah it's, it's a serious thing it's a serious thing practice it's by- real and it shouldn't be taken lightly it could end in uh, death. If you or someone you know is practicing hypnotism, please yeah. call this number on the screen right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just like you and subscribe. You might think it's harmless fun. You, you go and there's a magician and he, he makes everyone in the front row think that they're a chicken. But, uh, you know, makes that's, you put, that's the light side of it. There's the dark side of the coin. Makes you put the egg back up your ass. Is that what uh, the magician did to you, Russ? Reverse chicken. You never... I mean, I didn't. No. I mean, did I? That I was in a I was I was seeing a hypnotist show one time. Okay. And um I wasn't necessarily like super enthralled, right? Yeah, yeah. I wasn't not having a good time, but he made everybody on stage with the with like his his click or whatever. He made everybody laugh mm-hmm. and I also like instantaneously laughed. Yeah, yeah. At the clicker. Uh-huh. So I had to go up on the stage and beat the shit out of him. Fuck yeah, yeah, yeah. Control me? I'll laugh when I want, fucker. Yes, yeah, what I'm saying. Ugh. I was at a fucking thing, and the guy was like, yeah, I'm going to hypnotize the crowd. I'm like, hey, pal, you don't fucking hypnotize me, okay? I'll come over there. I'll fucking hypnotize you. I'll fucking smack you in your mouth and tell you a couple things. Make you do some stuff, huh? <laughs> Take you in a room and make you do something with a man that maybe you didn't think you wanted to do. Me- hey, how you think about that? You think that's funny, tough guy? Me huh? spin. I've only heard about Meatspin. That was like a website where like it shows you penises or something. There's a guy with a big dick and he's swinging it around like a helicopter, and it's just okay. going around and around. It's a GIF, so it just oh okay, it just keeps going. So uh, yeah, I, I'm saying this movie has good performances, good effects. It's just not a very good movie. Good bazongas, hubba. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. You get to see Adrian Barbeau. She's still kind of hot in 1990. Uh, so I'll give it uh, two De Niro's for uh, you know Adrian Barbeau's two large breasts, two evil eyes. I get it. Yeah, it's the boobs. Exactly. It's the breastesses. The evil eyes of the film are the dirty pillows of one Adrian Barbeau, who you know they drive men to uh, uh, perverse and uh, horrible paths in life, to hypnotize old men, steal their money. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, I guess uh, out of De Niro's, I give it... Uh, I mean, I guess we're doing the first part and then the second part, huh? As a separate movie? I think it's just one movie. Just the one but eye the first. reason why I'm giving the whole movie two De Niro's is because I think that both are two, two De Niro shorts. Okay. So... Right. There's no real controversy. Yeah, as, as I said before, when I read the fact that this could have been a series... Like, yeah, and that they kind of these were the guys who made two episodes, and they were like, Imagine if it was two pilot episodes, and they were like, Ah, oh, well, yeah, we were gonna get fucking what's his name? Yeah, it sounds we're like they get, couldn't get the guys they wanted, we couldn't get Stephen King or Carpenter, or yeah, yeah, it's all good. Uh, so yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll probably give it two as well, yeah, uh, but that's just this first one. I might, I might rate the next one higher. Yeah. Tune in to I, find I out. Piss, Russ. I'm sorry. It's all right. The second short is a is by Dario Argento, and it's called The Black Cat. The Black Cat stars Harvey Keitel as Rod Usher, <laughs> a crime scene photographer who seems to really enjoy his work. He walks around, and he has like, he's got like a British accent, but it's not. <laughs> He's like trying to put on. Well, uh, that's like, how so Harvey Keitel talks. He like Harvey Keitel. He kind of sounds like <laughs> a guy who's like really struggling to pronounce things properly. 
Like it sounds like he has like a speech impediment. And he has to talk really slow and say how spell out the word. Per, like he has like a weird speech uh, speaking way about him. Sure. But this is not a good Harvey Keitel role. He's a great actor, <laughs> and he's great in a lot of movies. This one is very it's strange. Interesting choice for yeah. his for his acting reel. <laughs> that was the idea. So in the first scene, uh, Rod shows up to a murder scene where a woman has been cut in half by a, a guillotine device by like a serial killer. A la uh, Pit in the Pendulum. She's splayed out on a, a table nude. Uh... The Rod Usher character is, he's wearing like a bow tie and a beret. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, he's like this like, artsy dude, old I guess. time mime or something showing up to the yeah, scene yeah. of this gruesome murder, and also he, made by Tom Savini. Yeah, and he, like, he, he, you know, he thinks of himself as an artist, and he's like taking all kinds of weird angles. It doesn't make much sense, because a crime scene photographer would probably not be interested in finding creative angles. Does he work for the news? Uh, he's supposed to be working for the police in that capacity. He's at a is crime he? scene. Yeah. Because I was. Well, I want to talk about this because it, it really it makes no sense. That's what, that's what I was yeah. thinking. I, maybe he he doesn't work for uh, the. He's not with the police. Well, whoever the fuck he works for, he's not taking photos of this crime scene very well. Okay. Oh no, yeah. You're supposed to like probably shoot so like you you can see a sense of scale and things and like present them in a way that no, he's got is like, good for you know <laughs> the case and uh, the um, forensics. Mm-hmm. He's got right? artsy shots of the yeah. nipple, <laughs> fucking black and white. It's very uh, oh, yeah. badly written. He's like fucking around with shit. Yeah, and he knows the <laughs> cops and shit. He's obviously like the regular photographer. The detective in charge is played by John Amos. He's, he was the, the husband on Good Times. He's in, like, Coming to America. He's had a pretty uh, long and... Uh, Prosperous career? Prolific career. Prolific, yeah. sure. Um, so <laughs> after work, Rod is in his dark room developing the photos when he's interrupted by a black cat. <laughs> yeah. A loud cat. This cat yells the whole damn movie. Yeah. And um, the actual the cat sound effects are pretty good. Sounds like real cat sound effects. Yeah. yeah. The cat gives him a little scratch. Yeah, Apparently, the cat had been adopted by Rod's uh, live-in girlfriend, Annabelle, who's kind of like a, a hippie type. She's right. into some, like, Eastern religion or something. <laughs> she's doing some chanting. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like so, a violinist who teaches local high school students. It's an interesting character. It is interesting yeah. because, as we'll find out, you know, that she's weird. She's weird, but she's very so strange. is so is so is Rod there. Rod is also very strange. So yeah, this cat scratching him his arm and uh, ruining his prints with the footprints really uh, really don't sit well with Rod. Yeah. Clearly, yeah. So the cat becomes a source of tension uh, in their relationship. Rod is at some office, which is very weird. I thought he was like a freelancer or he worked for the police, but apparently he's at an agency or something. And some higher up is telling him he needs something other than crime scene photos for his photography book. Yeah. Nothing about this scenario makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Why would he be publishing crime scene photos in a photography <clears throat> he book? He wouldn't. He that shouldn't would be, be highly there. illegal. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. He almost gets kicked out of the beginning. There's like a bouncer or something. It was like, yeah. hey, you can't come back here. And he's like, see the badge? And he's well, like, he's there in fucking... official capacity to work with the police. I think it's just that Dario Argento doesn't understand how police work. Oh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, they they show up, and uh, well, also Italy's a very small and less developed country. It was probably like, no, he's uh, Giovanni. He does the crime scene photos and he makes uh, the pizza in the town. Uh, yeah. and it doesn't make sense in Pittsburgh, <laughs> for sure not. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, yeah. So yeah, and then some guys like, hey, you got a new job or something? What do you mean? He's there in the office, and some guy yells at him to yeah, get. Yeah, like, he's got a job with the. They're sending him out to go to another crime scene. Right. Yeah. So is he freelance? That's what I'm saying. I it think makes, he it doesn't make any sense. I think he might be with like a news reporting service or something. But I still can't. Make but it's sense. not a news reporting service. He's, he's not just, working. He's not a journalist. He's he's taking crime scene photos for the police, and the, his higher up is telling photos. him that he needs to take something else for his photography book because they're managing his art photography career as well. It doesn't make any <laughs> sense. So uh, one day, Annabelle takes some of her students to a concert. So, you know, Rod gets shit-faced at the bar across the street from his house. And he sets up a little photo shoot in his studio with the cat. Oh, but but you see Annabelle. She runs out of the place with a with a student, right? Oh, okay. 
Yeah, I guess I missed that, but that makes sense. Yeah, Rod's drinking. Yeah, yeah. As the guy does in the Black Cat book. So be, until then, I had no idea like how it was related. But then, when the Black Cat showed up and this guy started drinking, I was like, oh, I know what's gonna happen. Oh, okay. So anyway, there she, she meets the couple. She, she uh, Rod's drinking. She runs down the street with a student. And we see uh, the old couple that she bumps into that know her okay. and familiarize themselves with her because they go for walks. Yeah, yeah, the Pims. Yeah. So anyway, continue. He goes home and has a little fucking. Yeah. So he's shoot. doing a, he's doing a, a photo shoot with the cat. He's taking pictures of the cat. Sets up a painting. And then you know it gets like more dark. He starts manhandling the cat, and then he starts choking him, and he breaks the cat's neck. And uh, you know Annabelle is pretty upset over the missing cat. He breaks the cat's neck. Yeah, isn't that how it ends? It's like he first he's choking, then he's like, and it's, "Oh it's wow, yeah." Done. I thought that might have been the cat like coughing up a hairball or something. I figured he snapped <laughs> its neck, okay, right? Yeah, he, sure. does, he does kill it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, that checks out. He's a fucking psychopath. Yeah, he's not a good guy. Like out of nowhere, that kind of elevated pretty quick. Yeah, like it was like, oh, he got scratched. He doesn't really like the thing. Oh, he's kind of drinking. Maybe there's something going on. And oh, I'm gonna fucking kill this cat. <laughs> I mean, the guy spends all day taking sexy pictures of uh, dead people cut in half and shit. Yeah, I mean, you should have a fucking boner when he goes home. (laughs) So Rod starts drinking a lot, uh, like he's spiraling. And then he has a weird dream where he he goes back to medieval times and he's uh, punished for killing the cat by getting a rod shoved up his ass. (laughs) Yeah, he's at a rent. It's kind of a goofy scene. It doesn't feel like it matches. (laughs) It's kind of weird. I mean, Gary, you know. I guess it represents his paranoia. You've clearly never been drunk and hit your wife before, because that night you'll have dreams about Ren Fair. He hit his wife? Yeah. He hit her? Yeah, he hits her. He smacks oh, her in the okay. face. Yeah, he's drunk, and he and she's like... Uh, is, oh, in the morning when she's looking for the cat? <laughs> I'm pretty sure uh, he's drinking. She's with another man. He strangles the cat during a photo shoot. Then he's drunk, and, his, uh, and he hits his wife. And then he sleeps, and he wakes up at a Ren Fair. Then a dwarf sings a song and brings a dead cat out on a stick. Yeah, yeah. So I guess it's like the dream is like that he's paranoid that people are going to find out that he killed the cat. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, they're going to crucify him, essentially. Yeah, They're yeah. going to quarter him and jam a big rod up his... <laughs> yeah, Up yeah. his rod. Which I'm sure that's what they did in medieval times. They probably uh, killed you in a pretty terrible way. Dropped you onto a pike so it goes from your your butt to your mouth. Yeah. Ass to mouth, Gary. Sure. The in- original ass to mouth. Is that the original ass to mouth. Yeah. Yeah. So Rod's scared of that. And in fact, I read it's a terrible way to go. <laughs> no. Yeah, for sure. I read that uh, Savini received a letter from from uh, Kaitel's lawyer mm-hmm. saying, "Don't show Harvey his severed head gag. He doesn't want to." He doesn't want to see pictures of it. He doesn't want to see it in the room. He doesn't want to be near it. Don't do it. And this is from his lawyer. So he's like, oh, wow, okay. And uh, apparently later when he talked to Harvey about it, he was like, oh, yeah, it just did creep me out. Oh, okay. Was this fucking this Tom Savini guy? You tell him if he's going to make my fucking head to keep it out of my fucking trailer, asshole. (laughs) We got understanding? Hey. Hey. Hey, Savini, why don't you fucking come over here? I got to fucking talk to you for a second. <laughs> yeah, don't be putting no fucking fake blood around me, okay? I don't like that shit. What, are you fucking weird or something? You like that stuff? <laughs> Smack him in his mouth. <laughs> you think he did that? Uh, that's too good, Gary. That was too good. I was seeing it all play out. I wish there was footage. We'll deep fake it. These takes some tits on Harvey Keitel. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Do you think Harvey Keitel saw a, a dead version of himself? He was like, "Y'all gonna be okay." Say the goddamn words. So he gets impaled. Yeah, yeah. They shove it right up his ass. He doesn't want to see that shit ever again. And so yeah. he goes on. This fucking Tom Savini guy wants to show shit up my ass. <laughs> I said, what, is you fucking weird or something? Uh, uh. <laughs> so, the next day, Rod's at a crime scene where a guy pulled all the teeth out of a corpse. Yeah. Yeah, and the dead tooth creep is uh, played by Tom Savini. Right. It himself. Seems pretty fucking stupid. Like, 
There's a serial killer who wants to pull the teeth out of a corpse? <laughs> Doesn't really make a lot she of sense. She might have been alive when she pulled the teeth out, Gary. No, but is that like a uh, cemetery? Oh. Isn't it? Maybe. Yeah. I don't remember that detail. Uh, so then out of nowhere, there's a scene where Annabelle... Uh, I thought it was out of nowhere, but you, you just pointed out she was like around with the kid before this scene. Yeah, yeah. She was kind of yeah. fooling around outside the window at least. Yeah. So yeah, there's a scene where Annabelle makes out with the, her young male student. Very strange. He's got to be what? Under 18? You think he's 18? No, he's probably under 18 because he's a high school kid. And it's it's a very strange choice because they've built all this sympathy for the character and then just... They just make her a pedophile. They just make her a Ed- hebophile or whatever. Edgar Allan Poe uh, married a 15-year-old, Gary. Yeah. 14-year-old. I don't know. One well, it's those. even more strange considering this was directed by Dario Argento, who's Whoa. Asia Argento's dad. Who? Who? Asia Argento. Who? That's his, his, his daughter, son? That's his daughter. Okay. Yeah. What about her? What's that? Well, about? she was one of the women behind the Me Too movement. Okay. And then it came out that she was grooming a child and then had sex with him when he was uh, underage. Oh, no. Yeah. And she was dating Anthony Bourdain at the time. Oh, no. And he got involved in trying to pay the kid off. Oh, no. And like a blackmail thing. And then uh, Anthony Bourdain killed himself. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Fun stuff. <laughs> oh, my God. What a <laughs> downward spiral. Yeah. Thanks, horror films. <laughs> I blame horror films. You blame Gary. horror films? <laughs> yeah. I mean, Argento's films are kind of weird. They've always been really weird. They, they're they about, like, torture and torment. That, well, here's the thing. Um, that's a common theme, you know? Obviously, Asia Argento was probably the victim of abuse. <laughs> and she's see. probably completing that cycle of abuse. But also, it's like, what the fuck is wrong with this 17-year-old who got to fuck uh, 37-year-old Asia Argento? What a fucking pussy. <laughs> And is also, a babe? Anthony Bourdain, if he killed himself over Asia Argento, also, what a fucking pussy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, um, Annabelle, <laughs> back to the fun stuff. Uh, so, yeah, he's so scared of getting penetrated in the ass in his dream. What does he do? He goes out and he publishes a book. Yeah, what this is really about is homophobia, right? <laughs> Yeah, he's so worried about yeah, getting yeah. pegged. God forbid his wife. his wife and a bunch of fucking medieval uh, peasants hold him down and, you know, put something up his ass till he dies. <laughs> it's fucking toxic masculinity. Yeah. Kind of, though. Yeah. And so, yeah, she, she, Annabelle's out. She's running. She sees a book in a, in a store window. You got it. Uh, published with <sighs> yeah. fucking dead cat. This is another <laughs> thing. It's like, all right, this wouldn't fucking happen. So she comes across the the book in a in a just a shop window randomly, and she buys it, and she finds the disturbing pictures of Rod strangling her beloved cat. You couldn't sell that in America. No, what he's strangling yeah. a cat. I bet you could sell that in Italy. You think so? Because they they're not sentimental towards animals in Italy. There there's a there's a statement at the end of this movie that the Humane Society was involved, and it's all was, legit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But did you ever notice that Italian filmmakers in exploitation films? They'll kill animals and people get really offended over here and they don't understand. It's a cultural difference because in Italy, they don't think of uh, animals as like pets. They, they're they all from people from farms that kill animals all the time. Oh, man. Cats just used yeah. to be ever, you know, in, if you yeah. go in a foreign country, there, there's a lot of places where dogs are just roaming the streets. It's just they're like rats, except you actually see them. I don't see rats. I just see a shit ton of dogs roving in packs around wherever. Bunnies. Bunnies in Alaska. Someone let bunnies out in uh, one of the towns yeah. up there. If you and bring an Italian immigrant over there, he'll be stomping on bunnies like they're ants. He doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> oh, it's a fucking bunny. Oh, I... he's just step on it. It's a different culture, Russ. Try not to be so fucking uh, no, that... insensitive Gary, to that's... our, uh, you know, Italian co-production. No, Gary, that's how you de-gut a rabbit anyway. You stomp on it. Squeeze yeah, all his yeah. guts out his butt. Yeah. So he was like on the stage, like, okay, how many cats do we have after we kill the first one? And like, we just go with one cat and we can't kill it? Let's go to the pet store and get a couple more fucking cats. I, got a long day. It's got 12 I, hours. We're going to kill a couple fucking cats, guys. I feel like they did use a couple different cats. For yeah, this yeah. Movie. <laughs> we'll talk about the cat in a little bit. Uh, so anyways, Annabelle makes plans to escape New York. And now that she knows her uh, weirdo beatnik boyfriend uh, killed her cat and, and she's committed, <laughs> you know, pedestry. 
Uh, it's probably good to get the hell out of Pittsburgh, right? Yeah, yeah. Get the hell out of Pittsburgh, as they say. Dr. Robert should have done the same thing. You got the fuck out of there. Oh, yeah, man. He should have stuck around. Yeah. That dumbass. So, uh, Harvey Keitel gets another cat from a waitress at a bar that he frequents. <laughs> Her name is Eleonora, which yeah. is a reference to some other Edgar Allan Poe story. But she's got, like, the craziest freaking hair it must have taken her like twenty minutes to stick her head yeah, out. Yeah, it's also. Out of limo. It seems like there's like a scene where she's like flirting with him, but then she's like, nice. then she doesn't like him. It's like, is there a scene cut where they had a weird interaction or something? And then she has a cat. For, it's very strange. Yeah, he's asking. She's got. She's got a cat for him, and yeah. he wants. He doesn't want the cat, but he's getting more drunk. And then she waits for him to come back and buy the cat that she knew he would. <laughs> Yeah. She's getting all turned on selling him this cat, even though he knows he's going to put on high heels and stomp his little eyeballs out. Yeah, yeah. So he gets the cat, and when he goes back to his house, Annabelle's there, like, packing up her things and getting ready to leave. And she hides, and uh, she catches Rod attempting to strangle the cat. Mm Mm-hmm. Which is very weird, because he's not even doing a photo shoot this time. No, he just got the cat in a box. He makes a little new set of, like, some Well, first he puts on his favorite jazz record. Dude, some... some what saxophone dance rock yeah. it's like jazz funk I, yeah. I will say the music really does pick up at this at like before this when he's walking around town it's got this hip funky jo- you know groove mm-hmm. and then he comes home and he puts on more of that it was probably in his head and now he's listening to it and here we are enjoying it yeah. on the radio he's got it on full blast as he like strangles out this cat dude nothing better so Annabelle cracks him in the head with a pipe perfect Friday night before yeah right <laughs> Until this moment. And kill a small animal. Until pipe to the head by your dumb girlfriend. Yeah, she's got to fucking ruin it. Um, I almost... And she takes the cat, and he like he's like unconscious, and then he just wakes up and, and suddenly screams, No! It's very <laughs> funny. No! <laughs> and chases after her. He's very drunk. Yeah, I guess so. It would yeah. seem he's, Str- he's some tr- strange uh, direction and choices in this mm-hmm. performance. It's, it's a little bit weird. So she lets the cat out the window, and and Rod attacks her with a butcher's knife. Oh, dude, just c- cleaves. Oh, her. dude, it's great when she puts her hand up to block and she catches the knife in it. So it's very brutal. Brutal. Yeah. Oh, Tom great Savini. Effects. Yeah. Tom Savini. At least we finally somebody other than a cat gets killed. Yeah. So this 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 film has picked up a bit. Um, Mr. Pym, Rod's neighbor, starts banging on the door. <laughs> So Rod throws Annabelle in the tub and washes himself off. You take a shower with clothes. Yeah, and also it looks like she's still kind of alive, which is really creepy. Yeah, she's like just like kind of clinging to life. Mm. It might so, have been just like an actor flinch. But it might have it not been meant for her to be alive, but that's how I, I yeah. kind of interpreted it. Yeah, it works. So he shoes away the neighbor who's upset about uh, Rod's shitty jazz music playing too loud. Again, very strange he decides to strangle a cat to a soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yes. And he makes up some dumb excuse about his girlfriend being mad at him and putting yeah, music yeah. on and doing that sort of thing. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, his, I guess his aggravation at, at the cat is – at his girlfriend is coming out of the cat. It, he must know. He must know. He must see that shit going on. I don't, really, I don't really understand it. Mm-hmm. Like, why would you um... – I guess he's paranoid that he'll get in trouble for killing the cat. I don't know, man. It's very weird. Why would you kill someone over a fucking... Yeah. It, then, it seems strange. And then buy another cat just to kill it? Yeah. I thought yeah. he was going to bring it... Because right, she was so concerned that it was missing. You thought he was like a replacement yeah, cat. Yeah. And he was going to bring it home and be like, look, honey, I fucking found the cat. But instead he immediately starts yeah. it. Or I thought like maybe he needs more photos... Because like he needs another book. Oh, sure. but it's like he just kills the cat. This is where I yeah. finger the cat's asshole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it hates this. Yeah. Look at this picture. Isn't it provocative? Yeah, it's LA, It's it's New York art scene, baby. I'm gonna sell yeah. a trillion copies of this, of this book that has gruesome murders in it. I mean, let alone a cat murder, which, you know. It doesn't pop. Its yeah, head if you were off, the but... family of like these crime victims, you oh, wouldn't want their fucking. Their crime scene photos is being published like that. It's fucking retarded. It's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. So there's a scene where one of uh, Annabelle's students shows up for a lesson, and Harvey Keitel tells her, no, we're going on vacation. So the girl asks if she can just come in and say hi to Annabelle, and he's like, no, she's sleeping. She's sleeping. Just put it right there. Make sure to be quiet. Somebody's sleeping. <laughs> it's like a very goofy performance. It might be uh, ad-libbed at the end. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's very strange. Oh, oh someone's sleeping. Yeah. Oh, no. she, she, she's sleeping. So 
I mean, he's he's faking it obviously because he's making it up. But um, yeah, it it was silly. I did laugh. Yeah, it's pretty goofy. So then Rod takes Annabelle's corpse and he basically just like spackles her into the wall <laughs> and throws a fucking bookshelf in front of it. There's a couple of spades of uh, paste and yeah, voila, bookshelf. And then the rest of the movie is basically about like Rod trying to avoid the suspicion of his neighbors as he becomes more and more paranoid about getting found out. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's pretty fucking wacky, dude. He, he drives around with a dummy wearing a picture of Annabelle's face. <laughs> Attached to a string so he can wave and yeah. the dummy can wave and it can give him a handy while he's driving down yeah. the street. Also, like he pretends like we're going on vacation and then he goes on vacation with the fake dummy and then he doesn't come <laughs> back with it. Well, he, is that his excuse? Why doesn't he make up a better excuse? Like she left and he, went away. Like she popped. <laughs> he had sex yeah. with it too hard. Plot doesn't make a lot of sense. The dummy. Yeah, yeah. 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 He he. It seemed like he was trying to sew things, but it, it just it became too many balls in the air for him to juggle. I think that's what they're trying to sell. They're just not. They just didn't, yeah. It just kind of gets confusing. Well it just yeah. you're just like what? Now he's with a dummy and it's sucking him off in the car. And it's, and it's just it's so old comedic. Yeah. It's like, oh, Mr. Pim, here we are. We're going on vacation. He's got a fucking dummy. He's, he's like, like home, not scary home aloneing him. He's yeah, got yeah. Kobe Bryant cut out in his in his like, driver's seat. Turn into fucking weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> um, yeah. So, well, so he's doing all these funny antics. Yeah. Um, and when he gets back from vacation, he, he finds uh, you know the teen that Annabelle was molesting sneaking around the house. Right, it was trying shot, to find his older lady friend. It was shot like a cat's POV, uh, which you know that's pretty cool. You thought it was going to be a cat. I thought I'm it was going to be the cat, yeah, because he loves killing cats. But no, nope, just, just a, a kid. fucking kid, just a teen, you know. And honestly, like, res- teen. dude, you got to like respect this kid because everybody, you know, everybody told him that like playing the violin was gay, and then like he got a fucking violin and just started fucking his hot music teacher. <laughs> this kid is a legend. Yeah, dude. Yeah, uh, no, no one's messing with him. Yeah, I mean, who who told you violin's gay? Violin's fucking sweet. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, this kid's smashing fucking puss, and he's got a Batman sticker on his violin case, <laughs> he does have and his sleeves are cut off. And he has a shirt with ACDC written on it in marker. I mean, it's 1990, Gary. What Batman came out 89? Yeah, yeah, that was the remember that was the push. That was the Batman push. Slap, you know, that symbol yeah. on everything. That's the type of cool kid that's going to bang an older lady. Yeah. You know? He likes Batman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Rod's throwing the kid out and, like, his neighbors are outside. So now everyone knows something fishy is going on. Right. He's and, uh, making a scene. Yeah. And the kid starts calling him a liar. And yeah, the kid really him. calls him out. That kid's pissed, dude. That kid was getting blowjobs. Oh, it was, yeah. Probably the first cool. time he ever fucking got his dick touched. And she's got that that fucking violin player grip. Oh my god! I mean, think you know? about that. Just yeah, doing <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was the uh, the wire snapping. Yeah, yeah, and ejaculation. Yeah. For all those perverts out there at, yeah. in YouTube land. <laughs> oh, shame on you! It's an underage boy that you're joking about, Russ. <laughs> So uh, Rod begins hearing noises from behind the bookshelf. He plastered over his uh, live-in girlfriend. And he goes to check it out, and a black cat burrows out of the wall. Yeah, it looks like they, like... Or at least it's, like, what it's supposed to look like. It really just looks like they fucking pushed the cat through a hole in the wall. <laughs> they birthed this cat through this hole yeah. that it shouldn't have fit through. It looks like the cat doesn't want to... No. Like, yeah. It reminds me of uh, that scene in Ace Ventura when Nature calls when he's pushing his, his <laughs> self out of the rhino asshole. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's a cat, and it's not its yeah. not signed up for the funny faces. No, no. And then he kills the cat with a wood saw, which uh, seems pretty unpleasant. Detective Legrand, uh, the John Amos character that Rod works with, shows up uh, with his partner. Mm-hmm. No one's heard from Annabelle, so they're there to check things out. And uh, Rod plays it pretty cool, and uh, he almost gets rid of them, but then they start hearing a cat, right? So right. they find the fresh walls and they bust it open to find Annabelle's corpse no. and a bunch of like weird hairless cats. Yeah. I guess it's supposed to be like the other cat had babies in there. Yeah. Hey, weird thing. I yeah. watched it with the subtitles on this movie. Mm-hmm. And at one point, uh, there was a line that was not uttered, mm-hmm. but that showed up in the subtitles as yeah. she's pregnant. It was like, oh, it's your lucky day. 
she's pregnant, but the she's pregnant thing was never said. So that was that yeah. was odd to me. But when it came out later at the end, that was like, oh, she had her babies in there. It was like, oh, that makes sense because yeah. I was thinking he keeps trying to kill the same cat, right? But really, I think it never really shows him. <clears throat> He might kill the first one. He might like break his neck, but that's not a for sure thing necessarily. He the cat does, does disappear, but he might have gotten. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, I figured he killed all yeah. those cats. I mean, yeah. No, you're right. After he slices that one cat with the saw, he does have a bloody. The bag. second cat he doesn't kill. That one gets away. Yeah, she throws it out the window. She throws it out the window. Right. So and it could it come back, and you know. But then the cat that busts out the wall, he cuts in half. He puts it into a bag, a bloody bag. He's gonna yeah. throw it out, and that priest confronts him. Yeah. And he's like, "Oh, I, I found the big rat." And I stabbed yeah. it a lot. You want to look at it? Yeah, yeah. Maybe we can, you know, jerk each other off. Yeah, he knows how to get out of that situation. He's like, hey, father, I got a big bag of uh, girls' pussies over here. Oh, you, want, you want to see? You want me no, to? No, no, son. Oh, I don't like girls' pussies. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out of here. And that's the devil's <laughs> yeah. playground. They're bleeding. It's a bleeding bag of pussies. Oh, that checks out with what I read in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, and I guess, like, these are supposed to be the kittens, but, like, they look like weird rats. It really doesn't look like kittens. Yeah, they're, like, big and malformed, but, like, yeah. yeah. It's a cool you know, practical it's... effect, though. Yeah. So, actually, in the in the book, this is kind of where it ended. So, originally, there's a guy. He's a drunk. He's He's got issues with his girlfriend or wife or something, and this cat is coming around, and he it scratches him one time and he gets pissed at it this other time and he like throws things at it and he stabs its eye out this one time he like grabs it and stabs his eye out and then the cat keeps coming around still and it pisses him off he's guilt he feels the guilt looking at this one-eyed cat now and um it, that boils up inside of him until eventually he hangs the cat he has altercations with his wife he kills her hides her in the walls the police come around. He get you know, he's like, no, no, I'm getting cocky. You know, it's fucking, you know, whatever. You can't can't contain these walls or whatever, you know. He, you know, he just says some bullshit to, like, yeah. make the cops be like, all right. And then they hear some meowing. He rips down the wall. Oh, they the same find the line cat. in the movie where he's like, these solidly built walls. and yeah, yeah, yeah. What is that line? It's ridiculous. I figured that was a line from the book because it's a very it, stupid. It's out of place. He yeah. just starts quoting like Shakespeare or I guess Edgar Allan yeah, Poe. It doesn't really fit in like modern Pittsburgh. And it's what tips off the cops. They were going to leave, but uh, am I getting ahead of myself? I think they hear the cat. Don't they? Don't they hear cat noises? They do hear cat noises. Yeah. And then no, he comes back because he gives him a copy of his photography book, and he comes back to get it signed. Right. And when he's signing it, he hears the cat noises, and they go check it out. Right, right, right. Yeah. And that's when uh, they, they find the, it. They, they find, find the, the thing, and that's where the book would would have ended. But in yeah. this one, uh, well, they they handcuff Rod, and uh, he attacks them with a pickaxe. Pretty fucking cool. Dope. This movie almost saved Dope itself weapon. at the yeah. end. Yeah. Uh, so neighbors begin knocking. Yeah, everything's really yeah. house of cards. Everything's falling. Yeah, this guy fucked it's up. Spiraling and talked and, to too many people. Had yeah, too yeah. many blow up dolls. Well, also he's cuffed to the he's cuffed to John Amos, and he, he drops the the key to the handcuffs down the stairs. So now Fucking he ain't getting to that key. No idiot. And I think uh, Legrand is just unconscious. So he's just he's just stuck to this unconscious big fucking cop. <laughs> so he's in a tight spot, right? Yeah. How does he deal with it? He goes to the window with a noose, which I guess he just has a spare noose lying around because he's a fucking weird beard. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. He likes to kill small animals. He's got nooses in the house. Yeah, in case a small animal shows up. Yeah. You gotta noose it real quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rod hangs himself by throwing the noose over a tree and pushing uh, Detective Legrand out the window. Pretty good stunt. Did he? Is that what happened? I yeah. thought he was trying to escape. He throws a rope up. No, I don't he, think so. He's like putting a noose on. The body slips off. No, I think he's trying to. He is trying to kill himself because he puts the noose on his neck. He does, but uh, maybe. But the thing is, like, how joke? do you how do you hang it was a yourself? Joke? Well, the, the issue is he's trying to hang himself. But um, how do you hang yourself if you're stuck to somebody? If he just jumps out the window with the rope, he can't hang himself. He's gonna fucking be attached to the. Right. So he has to throw the cop out, which then. Pfft, Right, right, but out. the body slips off. It's not even like he pushes it off. It like slips off this window. So. It looks like he's pushing it off. Yeah, he he falls, breaks his neck. the The body swing back and forth thanks to the power yeah, of editing. Stunt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I think they cut too soon, or they the the film reel ended. Oh, okay. Uh, because they definitely do a reverse footage at the end. Oh, okay. I didn't catch that. No. Interesting. 
yeah the body swing and then it like cuts and there's like a weird little like blip you know and then they like reverse swing back oh, okay um i don't know man it's definitely a more interesting film than the first one but i don't know if i'd say it's a good film it's kind of a mess my, my girlfriend also thought the second one was better but yeah. i seem to like the ideas of the first one more kind of reminds me of george romero's creep show short with the cake no, I don't remember that. Oh, one. Woman's haunted by her fucking ex husband. No. Or is it her father? I don't know. Yeah, and I guess if you're interested in George Romero and Dario Argento, this yeah. is definitely one to watch. It's more of their things. Yeah. I feel like George's felt a little more polished. Argento's was a little, uh, you know, felt more, more, more Italian. And, yeah. And, yeah, for and, sure. And, um,. But also more creative and yeah, a little more uh, outside the box. More, more better. He's a better visual storyteller, but he's also used to working on making like shitty low budget things. Mm-hmm. Um, so he give him four point five million. Yeah, see what he can do. I mean, it looks good. It's a nine million dollar feature, so it looks good. It has good effects. Both the shorts have good casts. Yeah, yeah, I liked all the actors. It's decent performances. It's just like underwhelming movie. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but if you do want to watch Two Evil Eyes, uh, this is free on Tubi. Oh, yeah, fucking uh, Two Evil Eyes. So at the Uh, end, the cat had eyes. It was because there were two directors. I'm assuming it was called Two Evil Eyes because it's two films. Because they each have an eye for evil. This movie tanked. It didn't do well. Didn't know? No one saw it? No, it it cost $9 million, and I think it it made like less than half a million. Ouch. Yeah, it's a miss. Yeah, that's a big stinking... But it's got oh. names, you know. There's a there's a 4K transfer. There's 4K Blu-ray out. It's become cult like, I think. I wouldn't say it's a cult film, but you know, it's a uh, it's at least it's a movie that, sort of... that exists. <laughs> you can watch it. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll agree with Gary. I'm gonna give it two out of five De Niro's. <clears throat> if you want to see some gross effects, good effects by by Tom Savini, um, kind of pretty acceptable movie. You know, I didn't want to turn yeah, it's it off. Pretty at decent. Anything. You know. Especially considering it's two different stories, like it's it's yeah. bite sized enough. You know, you can watch it for free. Yeah, you can watch it for free. It's not. A in big fact, I watch it in two parts. I, I watched one one night and I watched the other one the other night. So, we'll be back next week to discuss another film, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be good. Yeah, hopefully a better movie. Wah, wah, or wah, may- wah. maybe a worse movie. <laughs> doink, doink. My nipples. Um. <laughs> All right, Russ. I'll give you uh, twenty seven minutes. Defend Asia Argento and go. She shuts your whole 